firing those two shots at the former prime minister. He tried to escape from the spot. He was overpowered by the security detail present on the ground and taken into custody. So he's being questioned right now. The Japanese police confirming that the man you see on your screens, the attacker who was uh, immediately surrounded, pinned down to the ground and arrested, is uh, a former member of the Maritime Self-Defense Force. Uh, essentially, to break that down for you, that's their equivalent of the Navy. So he was a part of the Defense Forces earlier, 41 years old, Tetsuya Yamagami. Uh, the question everyone's asking is why? We don't have answers to that just yet. We're still waiting for the Japanese police to confirm uh, any information they can for us uh, as to exactly why he targeted the former prime minister in the manner that he did and why he fired at him using that shotgun. He fired at him twice from behind and at very close range, we're told, about just meters away from the former prime minister. He stood there and fired at him. And the footage that, you, that we've been able to access, you know, you can hear a loud bang and then there's this plume of smoke. And immediately after, the security detail present there went after the attacker and took him into custody. 41-year-old Tetsuya Yamagami is now in the custody of the Japanese police, a former member of the Maritime Self-Defense Force. So more details that we're picking up right now on the attacker. We're still awaiting any word, any update from the government on Mr. Shinzo Abe's condition. We don't want to speculate on his health. Uh, the last update that we had was, in fact, from the paramedics team that was present at the spot where he was shot at, when he collapsed. He's been airlifted since to a hospital nearby, and uh, we're waiting word from the hospital also on his condition. Geeta Mohan, our foreign affairs editor, is also with us. Geeta, information trickling in right now about the attacker. 41 years old, Tetsuya Yamagami was uh, a former member of the Maritime Self-Defense Force. So had experience using firearms. Well, that's right. A very disturbing, again, development over here. Part of the Maritime Force in Japan uh, holding a gun and attacking, targeting leadership of Japan. Certainly very disturbing. Again, we do not really know why he did it, what the motive was. But the fact that he was trained, he knew how to use the weapon. Uh, again, uh, do not know how he accessed the weapon because if he was for a former maritime officer, he shouldn't be having a, a, a weapon. But a lot of uh, former officials, former uh, soldiers do uh, keep uh, uh, one or two of their weapons that they've used in the past and have a li have licenses for the same too. Uh, do not really know exactly Akshita, what the rules are for Japan, but this is disturbing that a man trained in arms has used arms against the leadership of the country. Uh, uh, we, uh, we, the, the details only trickling in, his identity revealed now, but uh, again, motive not revealed yet. So in all probability, given that he's a, he's a maritime officer, if he does not want to speak, it will take time to break him. If he wishes to speak, we're still waiting for details on uh, the motive, why he did what he did. And even as we're saying that, we do know that uh, Shinzo Abe, a staunch opponent of any kind of Chinese aggression in uh, in, the, in the in the maritime waters of uh, of, uh, of Japan and uh, and uh, the South China Sea uh, and the entire Southeast Asian region, where Japan has supported quite a few Southeast Asian countries, uh, is somebody who would who's who's ill health or who's uh, if he's in trouble would be celebrated in China. Now we're getting reports that some in China are actually celebrating uh, the attack. Uh, it is a very unfortunate, but Shinzo Abe has been known to be absolutely anti-communist, uh, absolutely anti-right wing, uh, also uh, very, very uh, intolerant to any sort of uh, extreme political affiliation or for that matter, any organization or person affiliated to any any cult. Uh, so uh, certainly a reason for people who dislike Shinzo Abe uh, to look at this as a, a positive development, but this certainly is one of the worst news of the year and will have a huge impact on Japan in terms of how Japan looks at security in itself. Uh, a global leader with a vision to take on uh, aggressive uh, autocratic countries in the region is somebody uh, most leadership most of the leaders looked up to 
and uh, still was a popular figure within Japan. The reason why he was campaigning for his uh, for uh, for his colleagues uh, in various parts of Japan. Nara City was also a campaign uh, visit for him. He was attending a campaign rally. He was delivering a speech when the attack took place. So disturbing developments coming in from various quarters, including from China, Akshita. The fact that Shinzo Abe was one of those uh, people who stood up against China, Chinese aggression, and also built an entire uh, uh, security structure, not just the Quad, but also the trilateral that, he, that India, uh, 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 Japan, and Taiwan had in terms of conversations and engagements. Uh, it just seemed like the man knew exactly what to do when it comes to securing the Indo-Pacific waters and how the leaders of various countries should be going about it. Uh, he proposed the quadrilateral long ago. It fructified mm -hmm. only recently when he was not the prime minister. So a disturbing developments coming in from various quarters, including from China, in terms of how they're viewing, how certain people are viewing and looking at an attack on a very senior leader, a global leader. Uh, the identity of the man, of the suspect, has been revealed, but we are yet to understand details on why the attack was carried out.